Hello. If you're wondering about the different location, I am currently in Scotland and um, tomorrow I will be going to Belfast for my grandmother's funeral. Um, Sombre occasion, but that's um, that's why there's a different location right now. I'm absolutely fine with that, incidentally, but before anyone asks, um, thank you in advance. Uh, I'm okay, but that's just um, why there's a different location. So I, I want to talk about a specific um, point of contrast. I want to talk about two negative emotions, at least two emotions that are generally perceived to be negative. Anger, anxiety. And I want to make a case as to why I believe anxiety is far more destructive than anger. Um, this is, of course, just my opinion. People can feel free to disagree. These are two emotions I've experienced my fair share of. Um, and they're both emotions that I feel have uh, have given me a great deal of insight um, into the human experience, if I could put it that way. Uh, I feel that my experience of these emotions has led me to, to thinking a lot about them, thinking about the nature of them. Um, of course, they're not totally unconnected. Um, very often, anxiety leads to anger in certain situations. Both can be a loss of control. But I would argue that anxiety is always a loss of control, whereas with anger, anger can be controlled. Anger can be tamed, almost like uh, a dragon. Let's say you're a wizard, think of the Harry Potter universe, and you tame a dragon and uh, get control of it. It's a wild beast, a dangerous beast, a magical beast, but it can be controlled. Or think of the Rocky analogy, if anyone's familiar with the Rocky series. Um, at the start, when Mickey Goldmill, uh, Rocky's boxing manager, says fear is like a fire, you can control it. Well, fear is a bit like anger. It's a fire, it's powerful, but it can be controlled. I find with anxiety, you feel very small, not physically, but metaphorically, you feel entrapped. You feel like there's an impending danger. And it could be from a range of reasons. It could be financial insecurity. It could be um, maybe dreading bullies. If, if you get bullied in a place of work or in school, it could be a wide range of different issues. Um, similar to fear, but more, I would say a bit more abstract. Fear is very palpable and very immediate. Um, fear, for example, is like if you're standing at a cliff edge, and will I fall off or not? Fear is a fighter uh, in his corner about to go into uh, a 12 round fight. That's very palpable, that's very immediate. Anxiety is more present continuous tense in the sense that it's something that can kind of linger around and it can really, really, really take take your whole thinking. It can be it can imprison you with with a sort of shackling feeling of uh, insecurity. Anger is, in my experience, a lot more immediate. When I get angry, it's very it, it's very rarely built up. It's very it's much more often immediate. So it could be something in the news that has made me angry some sort of injustice. In many of my videos, I'm, I'm speaking from a point of view of um, contention, anger. And that's, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. That's just my honest approach to this. Um, but again, it, it's a bit like fear. It, it's more immediate. And yeah, you might uh, you might dwell on something and be angry about it for a long time, but it's, it's something that is immediately triggered by a particular experience or a particular... A particular thought process with anxiety sometimes it's actually difficult to pinpoint exactly what you're anxious about with anger i feel for instance if you're angry about injustice that anger can can motivate you it can be like a fire it can drive you it can motivate you to either seek justice or to support those that are seeking justice it can be very actually very powerful you know, we see anger as a bad thing, but anger can sometimes be um, be based on 
well, not based on, but it can it can lead to something positive in of itself. It's not a pleasant thing. You know, it's not nice to feel angry. It's a, it's a negative feeling. But without any anger, we'd all be robots and there would be no motivation to go out and try and make the world a better place as we see it. So anger is hugely relevant in terms of shaping our philosophy, our ideology. Um, that's why I believe it is different from anxiety. Anxiety, in my opinion, does nothing constructive. Fear can. You can have a positive fear which, which motivates you. For example, again, I use a boxing analogy. A fighter or a martial artist about to go into combat knows, you know, they're frightened. And any martial artist that says they aren't is lying. But why do they keep doing it? Because that fear drives them. That fear is a, a nervous excitement. And it's very, very different from a, a palpable anxiety that is lingering. With something like an immediate fear, it's, I'm not saying it, it is always a good thing, but it can, it's different. It is different. Um, but then, of course, there's negative anger, uh, excuse me, negative fear where, you know, if you have an intruder in your house and they physically attack you, that's a very intense and sudden fear. So that's obviously different. I think with anxiety, uh, anxiety is not as direct and as blunt as fear, but it, it's more lingering. I would suggest more lingering than fear. Fear is immediate. It's it's obvious. It is what it is. So, for example, the anxiety comes from wondering, will an intruder come into my house? The fear comes from the immediate sense that there is an intruder in my house. Um, I think that's the difference. And, you know, people can feel free to disagree and offer their own interpretations. But that's how I see it. So to get back to my, my main point, really, I think that where there is positive energy, happiness, positive excitement, um, empathy, joy, these sort of things, these positive things, they should definitely be cherished. But negative energy isn't always a bad thing. Anger can be negative energy. It's, it can be tiring. It can be draining. And it isn't pleasant, it's not, but it can it can help us to shape our conviction. You know, if we see a great injustice, you don't want to see it, it's not pleasant, but it can shape us into being a stronger person because it then creates, it's what I would call empathetic anger. So much of the anger that we see, especially online, is not necessarily selfish personal anger like I have been wronged, but rather a wider social conscience, i.e., I'll give an example. If you see a particularly heinous crime, um, let's say, for instance, a uh, sex crime against a child or a particularly vicious mugging, something like that, it's what I would call empathetic anger because you're not personally hurt by it but you're looking at a situation where an innocent person has been hurt and you know it's going to impact their life. So it's empathetic anger because you are, are empathetic with that person. You're sympathetic, I should say. Sympathetic anger is perhaps a better term. Empathy and sympathy, of course, are not exactly the same thing. But yeah, um, empathetic an anger as well, because if you've been through a negative experience, such as being the victim of serious crime, hear about someone else who's been a victim of serious crime um you know you, you feel for them you you know what it's like if you've been a victim of bullying serious bullying you empathize with bullying victims and so on so that's why i believe that anger can be channeled as a positive thing it can it can inspire us to go out and change the world to focus our energy into helping people get justice or helping people um, overcome the way that they have been mistreated. Now, I'm not suggesting that people go out and be angry all the time. I'm not saying that we should never suppress anger. Clearly, there are people who have an anger problem. And I think that's the issue when they cannot control their anger, where, for example, they resort to violence every time they're angry. Or they, they get into wild rants where they're yelling in people's faces. That's clearly the sort of anger that needs to be controlled it needs therapy or it needs it needs to be channeled in a more constructive way but anger in of itself is not necessarily a bad thing if it is 
channeled in a constructive way. And that isn't even, I'm not even suggesting that that should be a quiet anger, like it, oh, people should put on a facade. It can sometimes be very raw and blunt. Some of the most powerful political statements in history have been statements of anger, of of righteous indignation coming from a point of anger. Um, so that's something I think really to think about. It's not something that I think is healthy to be, clearly it's not healthy to be angry all the time, but particularly if someone is seeking justice, say for instance, someone's relative has been murdered, that is going to impact their whole life. And they're going to be angry a lot of the time and lost a lot of the time. But, but the quest for justice is what seems to drive them, based on what I've seen in interviews and, and this sort of experience. So let me know your thoughts. Um, do you agree that anger can be a much better energy than anxiety? Just to conclude, um, clearly it's not pleasant to feel anger all the time. I don't, I don't enjoy when I feel anger, but I am also aware that it can make me feel strong. It can make me feel motivated. And I think that's very different from anxiety. When I have anxiety, which thankfully isn't very often, but I do occasionally get it, I feel deeply depressed. I feel weak. I feel it's, it's a truly unpleasant feeling. Anger, which is also something I experience, is, um, it's not pleasant, but it can motivate me to, to speak out, to upload these videos, to, to, to do what I feel is right. So thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts.